Two South African soldiers were killed and three injured when a mortar landed in their base in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The South African National Defense Force said it thinks the mortar yesterday was a result of indirect fire and an investigation was underway to determine who was responsible. The incident comes as Pretoria is sending about 3,000 additional soldiers to fight M23 rebels in the DRC. But some military experts warn the troops are not prepared to take on one of the continent's most potent insurgent groups, Daring Taylor reports. With large deposits of diamonds, gold, copper and coltan, the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the most mineral-rich regions on Earth. That wealth also contributes to making it one of the most volatile. The Council on Foreign Relations in Washington, D.C. says six million people there have died in conflict since the first Congo War began in 1996. The same ethnic tension that ignited the 1994 Rwandan genocide, during which Hutu extremists killed an estimated one million Tutsis, is present in eastern DRC. The M23 formed in 2012, saying it would defend Tutsis living in DRC against Hutu militias and remains locked in war against the central government in Kinshasa. Human rights organizations say M23 rebels have massacred and tortured civilians, burned villages and crops, and raped women and girls. They also say DRC forces have committed similar atrocities. Now, with the United Nations withdrawing peacekeeping troops this year, South Africa is stepping into the breach. Quibus Mare, a South African opposition member of parliament and a former army general, says it's difficult to judge what's motivating this. Remember, this is basically a conflict between neighbors. Why South Africa? We are not one of the neighboring countries. We are not in the Eastern African community block. How will we fund this? We have struggled to maintain our aircraft and our equipment and the logistical support to those soldiers. We know the dilapidated state of the Defence Force, so 2 billion rand... The M23 is one of the largest of more than 100 rebel groups operating in eastern DRC. In recent weeks, its forces have been attacking within about 40 kilometres of the city of Goma, the capital of North Kivu province. Pretoria says its troops will be in DRC until at least mid-December, at a cost of more than $100 million. The expenditure has caused the public outcry because state-owned corporations are blaming budget cuts for not being able to deliver basic services, including water and electricity. Stellenbosch University defense expert Thomas Mandarup says it's likely the South African soldiers will fight in DRC with what he called shoddy weapons and equipment. There's a big backlog of maintenance, which costs a lot of money, and it takes time. You cannot just give extra money and then suddenly all the equipment will work. We look at the ability of logistical strategic transport. It's very, very limited because the number of C-130s uh, transport aircraft is not enough. This is going to be an issue. And we saw it back uh, when the South African troops were caught in a disastrous operation in the Central African Republic, popularly known as the Battle of Bangui, where South Africa lost 17 soldiers were killed and a lot of wounded and they fought at... Uh, South African government officials told VOA they're confident the country's soldiers are well prepared to fight the M23. But Mandarup says it's a conflict they should not be facing, especially because he sees no evidence of South Africa being capable of extracting its troops should they become overwhelmed. Pretoria says sending troops to eastern DRC is part of its commitment to bring peace to African war zones. For VOA News, I'm Darren Taylor in Johannesburg. The U.S. State Department Global Engagement Center is exposing Russia's intelligence services for providing material support and guidance to Moscow's African Initiative, a new information agency focused on Africa-Russia relations that has spread disinformation regarding the United States and European countries. According to the Global Engagement Center, the African Initiative recruits African journalists, bloggers, and members of local populations to support the organization's work of boasting Russia's image and 
denigrating that of other countries. For more on Russia's disinformation, viewers Esther Githui Ewart spoke to James Rubin, the Special Envoy and Coordinator for the U.S. Department of State's Global Engagement Center. Now, what do you suppose Russia is trying to achieve in Africa by denigrating the United States and European countries? Well, it's hard to get inside the head of the Kremlin when it conducts this kind of information warfare. But if I were to uh, imagine their objectives, I think it's a frustration for uh, Russia that the United States, uh, over the last 20 years, as Secretary Blinken said during his trip to Africa, had spent something like a hundred million, sorry, a hundred billion dollars in health initiatives that have really uh, been probably the most successful programs in, in history in the health area the PEPFAR program and others like it, that have saved countless lives for Africans. And the Russians probably uh, find that frustrating, uh, that American health uh, support is so dramatically successful, and they're trying to challenge it and make people question it, even though independent experts know that it's been uh, so successful. Mr. Rubin, the health uh, initiatives in Africa that the U.S. and other you know, Western countries have uh, been spearheading there are very critical for the continent. We know what happened during COVID-19 and other epidemics. Uh, what kind of propaganda is Russia spreading about that? What do they want to see happen to the health sector in the continent? Well, this is what's really so uh, dastardly about what the Russians are doing. Um, normally, the Russian government and the United States have geopolitical debates about uh, the Ukraine war or about, uh, you know, uh, policies in Europe. But in this case, the Russian government, through its intelligence services, are really responsible directly for killing Africans. Think about it. By deterring African uh, citizens and uh, and governments from uh, using Western health services, African people, men, women, and children, might not go to the facilities where uh, life-saving health uh, uh, services are available. They might not go to the uh, uh, get their vaccines, get their health care, because they've been misled into thinking that it's part of some conspiracy theory the Russians have invented. So this isn't just uh, dangerous uh, for U.S.-Russia relations. Russia's intelligence services, by doing this, they are showing they don't care about African lives. Ethiopia's government on Thursday dismissed allegations its soldiers massacred scores of civilians last month in the country's restive Amhara region as the West is demanding an investigation into the killings. A rebellion broke out in Amhara, Ethiopia's second biggest province, last year when the government moved to dissolve regional forces and absorb them into the federal army later. Rebels captured several towns across the region before retreating to the countryside. Rights Monitor have documented a range of human rights abuses by government forces during the conflict, including alleged extrajudicial killings. Ethiopia's state-appointed Human Rights Commission says troops killed at least 45 civilians in the Amhara town of Malawi following clashes with a local militia in January. Another national rights body put the death toll at over 80. Both organizations said the killings included shootings that occurred during house-to-house -house searches. Government spokesperson Legese Tulu on Thursday told the local language service of German broadcaster Dutze well that there was fighting in, Mal in Malawi but insisted the mil did not target any civilians. Legacy said soldiers entered civilians' homes to conduct searches after the fighting and acted in self-defense when they were fired upon again by armed elements. Not only would civilians never be targeted, even surrendering combatants would not be killed, Legacy said. 
On Wednesday, the United Kingdom urged a full investigation into events in Malawi a day after the European Union called for a probe and dialogue to resolve the conduct in Amhara. Authorities have cut the interest in Amhara and in some locations there is no phone service, making it difficult to verify events. The Fano were allied with the Ethiopian federal military in the two-year-long war against the Tigri People's Liberation Front in the neighboring region of Tigri. But their relationship was uneasy. The two sides began fighting even before the Tigri conflict ended in November 2022 with a peace deal. Amhara is now under a state of emergency that suspends civil liberties and gives extra powers to the security for services.